Hey guys, what's going on? Lane back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about part three of Lupin. Lupin is a French mystery thriller series based on the character Arsène Lupin by Maurice LeBlanc, and tells the story of Hassan Diop, a professional thief who is inspired by the character to do what he does for a living. This third part of the series continues where the second left off, as Diop is on the run from authorities following the reveal of his identity. Despite being the most wanted man in France and being estranged from his family, Diop is determined to perform one more big heist so that he can retire and bring his family a more safe life. As he carries out his mission to steal a treasure called the Black Pearl, he finds himself being haunted by demons of his past that threaten to unravel everything that he's worked for. I've been a big fan of the series ever since it came out around the time I started doing Netflix reviews, and the wait for this third part was worth it. Though it does have a few issues with pacing and repetition, the series remains as entertaining as it ever was, due in large part thanks to the main character. This series definitely wouldn't be what it is without Omar C's performance as Diop. He is so much fun to watch slick-talking people, pulling off all kinds of trickery for his heists, and the calm and collected manner he maintains even when he's being chased. He's the perfect example of a gentleman thief, though in this part I'm glad he's not quite as flawless as he used to be. He still pulls off sleight of hand now and then, but with the added pressure of having his identity revealed, he occasionally cracks and has to improvise strategies on the fly. He feels less invincible compared to previous parts, which gives him a more down-to-earth feel that made me appreciate him more, especially once his family life starts to come into the picture more. His relationship with his wife Claire and son Raoul is more antagonistic than it was previously, which makes sense because they have to deal with the attention of being related to one of the most wanted men in the entire country. I like seeing Claire trying to manage the pressure like Diop does, and how it differs compared to her husband. Sadly, she and Diop don't interact with each other all that much until closer to the end of this third part, and Raoul doesn't have much of anything to do in this part at all. Still, it is nice to see them continue to be involved in the story, as they give Diop the motivation he needs to proceed with his heist. Diop's friend Ben was one of the more surprising characters for me in this part of the series, in a good way of course. He's more directly involved with the important events of the story, and he doesn't feel as much of a lackey this time compared to how he did in the past, which helps flesh out his relationship more in the present in the same way that the flashbacks in part 1 and 2 did in the past. As with the previous parts, the police also play a role in the story in trying to catch Diop like they always have. Gadara returns as the conflicted cop who has a soft spot for Diop and butting heads with fellow officers because of his admiration for him. Not much has changed with the police in this part of the series, but they do help add tension to the story, and it's fun to see them fumble over and over again trying to catch Diop. One of the more disappointing story angles in this part involved a pair of journalists who were trying to cover Diop's exploits and expose more of his background to the public. I like the idea behind this, and I could see the filmmakers were trying to shake things up with the story, but it never ends up going anywhere. It feels like they're only relevant for one or two scenes, and they kind of just spend the rest of the series floating around. The best thing about the story for the series this time around is the depth it adds to Diop's family life. I don't want to say too much about it so as to avoid spoilers, but it answers a lot of questions I had from the previous two parts regarding his mother. Diop deals with a group of powerful people that forces him to become involved in the criminal underworld of Paris so that he can find out more about her. This gives the series a more personal touch and a darker edge to the story this time around without sacrificing the entertainment value of the tricks that Diop pulls off, which I enjoyed. And on that note, these caper stunts that Diop pulls off are easily the best thing about the series, as they were in previous parts. They range from acts of stolen identity and deception, to elaborate set pieces where Diop steals something, to good old fashioned chase sequences, and it's just a blast to see so much variety crammed into one series. The entire sequence that takes place at Chateau de Toiré is probably my favorite set piece in the series to date. It has everything from an eloquent setting, to a play-by-play -play plan of the theft, to the suspense involved in the plan, to a twist at the end that shocked me, and I loved it. As I mentioned earlier, Diop finds a bit more room for error this time around with how he pulls things off. It just feels like he makes more mistakes this time around, some of which admittedly are on purpose, but I actually like it, because it makes him feel more human, and also ties in with the desperation he feels trying to find his mother. This desperation even results in him betraying people who I never thought I'd see him double cross. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I was shocked to see the lengths Diop went in the series, and it did a good job of keeping me on my toes to see what would happen next. The suspense is still on point as it's always been, but the series also knows when to take a break and throw in some levity here and there. One of my favorite things about Lupin is the amount of charisma Omar C injects into his character, to the point that every character he meets falls for his BS in the funniest way possible. By far, the best interaction he has with another character outside of the main cast is a retired military officer who he befriends to try and get invited to a formal event. The amount of dedication involved with how this deception is pulled off is hilarious. Flexible et filant. <laughs> 
Just as the last two parts did, this series also has its fair share of flashback scenes that show moments of Diop's past in 1998. To be honest though, I didn't enjoy these scenes as much as before, because they don't connect well with the main story until the last three episodes or so. They're still good period pieces, and I'm glad they don't rely so much on the Pellegrinis this time, but they still feel inconsequential to the plot, at least until much later on. In the same vein, I was also annoyed by how many cutaways the series had in this part for different time periods. It feels like every episode starts with a bait and switch, starting off interesting at first, before cutting away to two days earlier, or two weeks earlier, or one week earlier. Sometimes the periods change without any indication of time at all, and after a while, it gets irritating with how much it disrupts the flow of the story. Beyond all of this though, the series is starting to become a bit repetitive with how it plays out. Diop does make more mistakes than he used to, but in the end it always feels like he has everything worked out with his capers and story beats. It's still a lot of fun to watch, and it's not quite stale yet, but it's starting to get there. Something I'll never get tired of seeing though is the gorgeous scenery of Paris in the series. There is a ton of beautiful settings to admire in this part, and combined with the suspenseful vibe conveyed by the soundtrack, it all lends an air of mystique that's perfect for a mystery thriller like this. I'm happy this part of the series didn't end on a major cliffhanger like part 1 did. There technically is something to that effect, but it doesn't feel cheap. And at 7 episodes, I feel this part does a good job at telling an entertaining and dramatic story in a complete manner without feeling slow or boring at any point. Overall, part 3 of Lupin is another solid entry to an enjoyable mystery thriller. If you like the previous two parts of Lupin, you'll definitely be at home with this part, as it does exactly what it sets out to accomplish. It doesn't do much in the way of breaking new ground, but with how good its formula is already, there's not much need for it to. It succeeds in continuing the story of one of the most entertaining characters in French television in an interesting manner, and I have high hopes that part 4, if it comes, will be just as good, if not more so. What did you think about the series? Did you think it was a worthy follow-up to previous parts, or did you find it lacking instead? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of part 3 of Lupin. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the American erotic thriller, Fair Play. Bye bye!